There we go. There's the splash zone. I <laughs> soaked them. <laughs> Great stage design. Well done. And which these guys actually are. Sorry. Sorry about that. Well done, guys. Compliant guests. That's what we like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's just loads of inward runs and zero G rolls. The answer is you can use the infinity coaster type and swap it out for the invincible trains. Of course, you could probably look at this and say, is it an Intamin? Is it a Mac? Does it really matter? It's not Tiaga, it's Tiger, dumbass. Hey everybody, how's it going? So thanks for coming along to episode number 11 of Chacholandia. And wow, what a series this is becoming. And guys, today is my actual birthday. It feels really weird saying that because I'm recording this not on my birthday. But when this goes out, it's my actual birthday. So, you know... Just throwing it out there, the super chat is active. <laughs> so welcome aboard, guys. Thank you so much for coming along. This is where we were at last time. Uh, this is Kraken and Spike. Thank you for this sign. Uh, I'm hoping this is going to go out on the Top Tips uh, video or the extras video. And uh, yeah, here it is in situ. Thank you so much. This is such an awesome, awesome, awesome sign. And this is where we were last episode then. This is the main coaster Kraken as named by Red Nebula over on the community tab uh, and so guys we're working on this part of the park here today uh, and we're also going to be coming over here very shortly uh, just to do some tidying up and, and everything and just do some admin bits before i take a week off so let's get cracking or should that be crackening get it happy birthday me i'm cracking up i'm cracking myself up i'm gonna stop <laughs> I'm here all week, guys. Hooray! <laughs> so, yeah, I didn't actually get a chance to do the extras episode. Um, I wasn't very well, as you guys already know. Uh, I'm feeling much better, but I have lost three days. So that's going to mean that this episode is going to be a little bit interesting to try and get done on, on time. But I'm going to try my best. I've got stuff to do. So, yeah, just to <laughs> keep you informed with that one. And I'm hoping you know where we are right now. We have a new restaurant. We have Spike's. Uh, and this is to say thank you to Spike for all of the work that he's put in with all of the signs and everything that he's been doing for all of the projects. Uh, and, of course, for Fundy and everything that he did there. So this is my little homage to you, Spike. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, so we also no longer have this horrible dead spot. Uh, in the park is now done. Hooray! <laughs> let's, let's close the project down and go home. <laughs> so, Spikes, here we go. So this is, uh, it's based on a zoo building that I've seen elsewhere. I'm sorry, I don't remember where it is, but I love the shape and I've just flipped the shape around and altered it ever so slightly. Uh, that's a tree. Uh, so yeah, I wanted to have something that complemented this idea of all of the modern building in the front, but I also wanted it to sit on the sight line as a bit of a monstrosity. And so for that reason, it creates a bottleneck here. And that's kind of intentional. Um, it's because this this building wouldn't have been planned to be here, but they've put it there to hide the monstrosity of the maintenance area from the inverted coaster. So it's kind of serving a, a purpose of a sight line hiding. And so that's why now you can't actually see it until you already walk past it. And there you go. Uh, by the time you hit the actual maintenance area, you're not really too bothered because you're now focused on the actual drop of the uh, inverted coaster here. And so what I've then done is I've thought about the, the guest uh, diffusion and where they're going to go in the guest journey. And I've created the path that comes down this way so I can send some guests down here. Uh, and then some guests will come down this way and some guests will come down towards Sentinel. So even though this is a bit of a bottleneck, it is actually okay. Just. <laughs> it's just. Uh, but I also wanted to maintain this idea that this would have been a through fair. So that's why all of the barriers and not barriers, sorry, the banners and everything are all in the same line. So they're continuing to go down, go down this way. Uh, so Spikes itself then, continuing this modern interior theme, uh, we have in here this very stark but modern interior we've got the effects that are going on on the ceiling so i've seen this in in a couple of restaurants in a, in a few places this would be like a, a wood effect but i've just chosen the orange uh, on this one and then we've got some exposed brick that's sitting at the back that just gives some kind of texture variation just to make it sort of flesh out a little bit if you like uh, and then we've got these little pods so these pods in here they're almost private pods they're just made out of art shapes and desk b uh, <laughs> Desk B is back. Yes. 
Uh, so yeah, it's made out of these uh, pot. These pods are made out of desk B and the art shapes. And this is uh, another like the two art shapes are placed slightly apart, and there's another art shape that's slid in there just to create the line. There's no real trickery involved with that one, but I just wanted this to have some kind of intimate area. And then you've also got the uh, the stuff on the bottom, so like all the the floor tiles and everything on the bottom. I wanted this to be quite stark and quite cold and quite modern so that's why it's grey and an accent colour or two so that's the orange and the blue and the pink because of course that's the park colours if you remember back to episode one do you remember back to episode one so long ago uh, <laughs> like I keep going back to the entrance going oh yeah I was supposed to have done that. Uh, <laughs> and then we've also got here your order counter. So you've seen this in the other places. So it's just a very similar setup. Um, this one we are selling pizza and energy drinks because it's a bit more fresh and it's a bit more modern. It's a bit more hip and cool. It's for the place where the teenagers will come uh, and sort of hang out and cause a nuisance and a mischief. So got the order counter, everything that you'd expect to find in here. You've got your till. You've got actually got a bar in this one. I wanted to put a bar in uh, because this is more adult orientated teenage or orientated so put a bar in there and then of course you've got all of your equipment on the back uh, and then you've got your drinks machines and, and everything and then of course i just need to go ahead and put the signs and everything on the uh, on the back uh, on the back here and so we come through this way uh, and again we've just got some modern table set up so uh, it's again it's i've seen something similar in in modern restaurants and everything and again it's desk b uh <laughs> so all it is just desk b uh Oh, except for the roof. That's Desk A. Because <laughs> Desk A doesn't get enough love. Can I get some love for Desk A in the comments, please? Thank you. Desk A. Uh, and I just cluttered it out with some stuff and the and the cocktail uh, seats and everything all along here. So uh, that's all good. And then I've kept the theme of the floor tiles and everything going through. And then we come out into the main foyer area. And, of course, this is... Ah, oh, this has turned out so, so much better than I thought. So the foyer area, of course, is, is this slanted wood. This is... The interior of this is very much based on a restaurant that we've got close by in a park. It's the Memorial Park. Um, and they've got this really modern cafe. And it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. They've got this uh, wall-mounted... Uh, mural if you like I don't know if that's the right word and it's just loads of words to do with the the, the why the memorials there and everything so uh, lots of like reflective words so I wanted to do something similar and essentially this this uh, more memorial memorial mural mural that's the word I'm looking for well memorials correct but the mural on the wall Make up words. Let's just go for it, shall we? Uh, <laughs> so anyway, it's a, it's a repeating section. So it is a small section like this, and it's just repeated over and over and over again, and that creates then the whole the whole picture that's on the wall. I've done that with words for roller coasters, so scream and roller coaster and loop and wild and blah, 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 and I've just repeated it down. So that's what we're doing. Uh, that's what we're doing here. And then of course we've got the the tall ceiling and the open glass front. Uh, and I absolutely wanted the open glass front. I kind of. I kind of wish I'd built this first because I think I would make this bit that we're looking onto slightly different. I think I'd probably either make it a water body or something that's worth looking at. <laughs> but you do get some uh, decent views of the actual first drop of the coaster. The view from here is not actually that bad, right? So uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll run with it and we'll go with it. So, uh, yeah. And then we just come outside and we have ourselves a nice little uh, picnic area. Now, I wanted this to really, truly hide from the guest view this maintenance shed. Or as much of the maintenance shed as possible. So, that's why we've got the high fence. Uh, and you come to within the actual seating area. And you don't really notice it. And, to be honest, you're going to be more distracted by the first drop of this coaster anyway, right? So... That's the more interesting sight line that you've, uh, that you've actually got. And then we're going to come down this way. So I have now put in all of the pathing to finish this area off. Beforehand, this was all grass and it was just open. Uh, and I've put all the flower beds, continuing that, that idea and that theme of uh, Chachalandia, having spent a lot of money on actual colours and everything. Going back to that original concept of colours and smells and sights and sounds. Uh, so that's what we're putting in, uh, putting in here. And then I've just completed the fence that was our health and safety nightmare <laughs> uh, all along here uh, but next door to the inverted coaster so that's now, that's now all filled out and complete and then I've just put in all the, vo the veg and the foliage, uh, vegetation and foliage down this way in exactly the same way uh, that we did here. So I'm just continuing that trend, putting all of the curb in. And then, of course, we're coming back up this way. And I've now lined the paths with some rock work, uh, put some extra foliage in. And then I've just put this uh, in here as a very heavily wooded area. Now, I've done that because people's 
people like to make their own paths. They will uh, never take the the actual established path if they don't have to so what we would have found is if this was not such a heavy wooded area people would have trailed a path from here and gone over to here and so as a result i have ended up making it wooded so you've got no choice but to come down uh, come down this way and go down there so that's how it looks from the top our gap is now full and i feel much better about this area <laughs> in fact i feel much better in general <laughs> Uh, so anyway, I'm going to come over this way uh, and I'm going to start work on the pirate area. So let's see how that's going to turn out. So we're sailing along at a rate of knots. We've hit some fog and now we've hit some rocks. You love these nautical puns, right? It's been a while. Come on. Tell me you love them. <laughs> Please tell me you love them. <laughs> so I've started work on the village and uh, this is probably about as far as I'm going to be able to do for this episode. No, this isn't the last update, but the village is all I'm going to be able to do this episode. I did have plans to do some more, but obviously I've lost time at the beginning of the week, right? So and anyway, I'm starting to do the final detailing phases of this. I'm starting to bring it all to life. So I just want to talk through the, the whole village process as we're going along. And, and the idea of the whole village is it's supposed to follow the similar principle as the actual pirate ship boat. So we've got the top spin down the bottom here that's, of course, going to have fountains. And that's supposed to represent the water that's going to be hitting the front of the boat. Uh, and then, of course, you've got the, this is a bit of a pirate ship here. Uh, you've got the back end, which is a bit top heavy. So this is where all of the accommodation and everything would be in this village. Uh, so that's what we've got here. And then we've got the water either side. So I'm wanting to give that that sort of a bit of love going on there and then in the middle we've just got the facilities and everything that, that you would uh, that you would typically find and then of course you've got the boat as the centerpiece uh, which would essentially be the same as the the sail or the mast right so that's what i'm going for here so the village replicates the the pirate ship boat just a little bit more so we're going to start down here where there's not really much to see but i've started to put the top spin in uh, and i've put the queue in and i love the chessington world of adventures when ramus's revenge was there unfortunately it's not there anymore it's been replaced by drop tower uh, but it had a queue that goes over the top of shops and i really loved that that's like touch so that's what I'm putting into uh, into this here so that you've got the queue that's going to come over the top of the shops then it's going to come down into uh, this bit where there's going to be foliage and everything a bit of theming and then you've actually got the ride itself here so top spin in game doesn't really get a queue so it doesn't need a massive long queue um, and there is also a science behind queues which I'll, I'll go into uh, another time but when theme parks are working out the length of the queues for rides they essentially use the capacity of a ride to determine how long the queue should be so if you've got a, a low capacity ride you don't want to make the queue massive because people will see a short queue and join it and so that's why you don't have as much of a physical space for a queue for a ride that doesn't have a, a big capacity so that people don't get fooled into thinking that it's a, a short queue because you've got a lot of space so you shorten the length of the queue to make it look like the queue is longer so people go off and try other rides have a look. It's actual. It's an actual science. It's an actual thing that theme parks do. Uh, so then we're going to come over here. So this is going to be a restaurant, um, and I'm going to be using the Burger Kitchen at Gardaland as my reference point for this because I love that interior. It's such a beautiful interior. So I'm just going. I, I have started the process in here of, of how I want it to look. Um, and if you if you're thinking these buildings look familiar, you'd be very very forgiven uh, because of the time constraints. I have used the Fundy Fun Spot pirate buildings as a base because I loved this front, right? I just loved it and I just wanted to use it again. And likewise with this building here, I just loved how it looked. So I've used those as a base and I've edited them for uh, Chachalandia. So they're not complete copies. They are, they are edited versions. But inside here uh, is going to be a restaurant. I'm going to keep it nice and simple in here. It's not going to be like spikes that we've just done. Um, it's going to be more uh, wooden and rustic and a little bit more open, not as not as detailed, not as modern in here. So I just need to do that. Um, and this wall is, is going to be uh, a door to somewhere else. And then of course, I'm going to leave this one uh, blank for a minute because I need to sort of find out how the area is going to fit to know what would go into this space, right? Then we've got toilets that are going to come in here, uh, and then this is how it's looking from uh, from down here. So, of course, I just need to do the, the detailing and everything uh, within the toilets itself, but I'm just laying out how they are on the landscape and how this would be a bit of a foyer. And so I'm, I'm pleased with how this is. Of course, it's going to have all of its usual details and everything that you'd expect to have from a chacho toilet, uh, the famous chacho toilets. So, yeah, that's going to be in there. 
And then we've got some grab and go units that are going to complement the uh, burger place. So uh, this is going to be where you're going to find um, coffee and donuts and that sort of stuff in here. And then I've yeah, again, this is the fundy fun spot pirate building. Um, I've just taken this idea and uh, morphed it into something new. So I've noticed that some pirate buildings have overhangs and they have bits that stick out there. <laughs> Someone's just got soaked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so it's got pirate bit, um, sticky out bits and uh, stucco bits and stuff. So I've just started to incorporate that into into this into this building. And then of course at the back I've started to put the back of house area. So this is going to be fenced off. Uh, and I've just bought the road around. Uh, so this is going to be a service road that's eventually going to come around this way uh, and then service the back the back end. So I think what's going to happen with this service road now, by the way, uh, is it's actually going to be an exterior perimeter service road rather than one that goes through the middle. I had originally planned to have the service road go through the middle but it's fine it is what it is uh yes i can still do the thing that i've been showing you in <laughs> the extras episode <laughs> you won't be surprised to know that the course has changed again <laughs> but it is still a thing i promise i promise i promise i promise it's going to be a thing uh okay so then we're going to come up to here uh, and then we've got the star attraction of the area Someone else has just got soaked. Uh, let's just forget the idea that we've got the roller coaster here. The whirly rig is where it's at. So, <laughs> of course you've got the whirly rig. I decided to choose the whirly rig over the pirate boat because this actually gets guests in game. The pirate boat doesn't. So, let's not bother to use rides that Frontier didn't care about. And then uh, we've got this top area here. Uh, so, this is supposed to be the, uh, the, the, the top end of the village itself this is where the accommodation would be you'd probably find some kind of market stores so again this is something i did in fundy fun spot and i loved how that how it was so i'm going to do the same thing it's going to be a bit of a market square it's going to have uh, little stores and little things and little trinkets and whatever and of course it's going to be kitted out with with pirate stuff so it needs a lot of detailing at the moment but this is just a, a foundation and a basis and then i loved the tower the, the bell tower in fundy fun spot and i was like that's the perfect the perfect thing. So I put the bell tower in and had all the cannons and everything so that it can protect the actual village itself. This would almost be like the gate. Uh, so it's the gatekeeper of the entire uh, of the entire village. And so that's what I'm doing here. And then, of course, I need to just detail all down here so that we can bring all of this area into uh, into one. And then, yes, you've got the central piece, which is the sunken boat or the pirate boat that's been destroyed. Uh, it just needs its foliage and everything adding to it so can't wait for that to be finished and can we please just take a moment to appreciate these I, spike just did such an awesome job provided me with uh, with two uh, things a, a fountain and this and these just work perfectly as tiles that go into the ground i don't think i don't know if they're meant to be put into the ground but i just loved this idea of having the tiles in the ground so that's what we've done here and then i've also put the fountain uh, over here as well so it just now fits perfectly with the kraken entrance and the ride sign and the queue line and oh i just yes it's just come together exactly exactly as i wanted it so guys i'm gonna carry on with my detailing uh let's get this finished let's get this done and let me show you how it went well thanks to my illness i've got to bring the dunfinal stamp out but it's completely involuntary i don't want to be done yet but i've run out of time but it's okay i'm not actually done with the village itself um there is still something that i'm keeping from you and you're going to need to come back after my holiday to find out what that is because it's not quite ready to show you so let's have a look at the village as it stands at the moment like i say i'm in a position where i'm happy with what i've got to show you i'm happy to call this episode done uh, but i'm going to need to come back and finish some stuff now the first thing is whilst you guys were really really keen to point out that it's tiger not tiaga thanks for that nobody pointed out that i was killing people with my supports <laughs> <laughs> so, I've corrected it. This one here was the other way around, and the train was going straight through the support. And in fact, if you go back and watch the POV in the last video, you wouldn't survive beyond this Immelman. <laughs> so, I've corrected that, and I've now made that made that a thing, right? So, it's now done. Um, okay, so, this is the uh, villagey type bit. This I am not happy with. I need to come back and do some more work to it. There's just... It feels like it's not done. It feels like it needs some more details. It feels a bit tacky. 
It's not to the quality that I want it to be done, but like I say, I've just run out of time. I just don't have enough time before this episode goes out to actually finish it. So it's on my list of things to touch up. Uh, but this is ultimately what I wanted, this multicolored village scene or market square scene where I've got some stuff underneath here. I've got some balconies. I've got enough um, doors and windows and everything to represent the fact that it's a residential area. Uh, the thing I'm not happy with is the... It's just it's aesthetic. It just looks a bit boxy. It just looks like it's been thrown together. I just need to do some touching up. But we're going to move on from that. Uh, not everyone's perfect. <laughs> so this I this I like. It's just there, right? It's just it's just there. Uh, it's happy. It does its thing. <laughs> so, oh hello. Uh, yeah, there we go. So then we've also got Whirly Rig. That's in its place. Um, some final touching up and some fencing and everything that's gone in here um, and just some sightline obscuring because back of house is going to be behind here right so just some trees just to obscure the back of house from here uh, thinking of guest sightline and of course you get some awesome views of the RMC from here someone's just got soaked again <laughs> and uh, yes yeah, so you get some awesome views of the RMC from uh, from this point of the village uh, and in fact you get an all right view of Pompoplop uh, and you get an amazing view <laughs> <laughs> of the uh, uh, yeah of our interment um, and now that the village is in so you can see like the village is all in all here right uh, this interment now actually has a little bit of context it's got a little bit of stuff behind it so uh, the scale and the size and everything now makes a lot more sense now that the actual village is in Okay, so moving along the village then, our pirate ship in the middle now has some steam effects added to it. Uh, I've put down the mulch to make it look like sand, uh, and I have also put some rocks and some foliage down. I've done this so that kids could climb on it if they wanted to. Yes, it's fenced off, but it's low-level fencing. Do you remember the concept that I was giving during Raygate Lake of you can't st if you can't stop people, make it safe for them? This is that concept make it safe for them to climb right so that's what I've done here low fences lots of sand they can climb on here until the cows come home um, just don't fall on this bit because you'll stab yourself it's fine uh, <laughs> and then we're gonna come over to this building uh, this building's now is complete um, again this needs some touching up it needs some t TLC when it comes to some theme makers toolkit and stuff but again time constraints just mean I haven't it's done for now I'm happy with how this looks on the lands landscape uh, it's it just needs some touching up so grab and go units nicely nicely done toilets of course the toilets are done of course the toilets are done why would I spend time doing a grab and go unit that you can see when I can spend time doing toilets that you can't of course <laughs> So, uh, yeah, the entrance way I like. Uh, I've wanted to keep this really simple. Don't walk through the wall. Don't contradict me as I'm talking. Uh, <laughs> so we've got the vending machines either side. And then we just come into a, a bit of a foyer bit and you come round to the left or round to the right, depending on uh, whether you're male or female or what you identify with. Um, and then you've just got the toilets in here. Toilets along here. Uh, sinks you have here. Uh, and then hand dryers that you have here right so that's all done I wanted to keep this one nice and simple nice and clean because these are actually quite small toilets so you wouldn't want to clutter these out with the same sort of stuff that I have done elsewhere and the female to the female toilets the latest toilets this is exactly the same principle it's just a, a mirror image but it's slightly smaller uh, because it's this building isn't quite symmetrical uh, so then we come across to the thing that I actually spent the most time doing and I'm really chuffed with how this turned out guys don't ever underestimate how much time doing a building actually I'm really not doing a very good job of showing this off though am I we're just looking at this <laughs> let me oh let's just make it worse oh no guys I don't even think I want to do another take of this <laughs> I just want to keep that in because I'm just a fail all over um so this is it from the outside, it's our burger place, and I'm really, really chuffed with how this has turned out, right? So uh, I've, I've got this idea of this pirate thing. Uh, the design is, uh, it's all to do with the secret that I'm not telling you, um, but this is the this is the design of the, uh, of the actual burger place. And then if we come into the inside, uh, it's, it's very much borrowed from uh, this idea of the Gardaland burger place, right? So this is really kitted out with um, piratey type stuff. I didn't want to go in too much detail with the with the detailing. I didn't want to go too deep with it. Um, I just wanted it to be lightly themed to pirate, but enough for it to be obviously pirate. These western drapes, by the way, coloured this yellow, actually look like sails. And I quite like how that's turned out. 
And then we're going to come across this way, and then again, I've just kitted it out with like piratey type stuff. So the sails and the ropes and the barrels and the netting, and I've just uh, cornered off some of the seating areas just to give it a bit of character. And then of course we've got the really deep roof at the top here. Now this uh, stucco has to be here because of the roof we're using on the outside. It pokes through this this roof way. There's no way of stopping that, so I've had to use that to hide it. Um, if I made this building wider and the uh, the roof not so pitched i could have probably made this a little bit bigger but actually i'm happy with this as it is it works so it's fine it's done move on <laughs> so that's the uh yeah that's the the burger place this is a secret so that stays as it is and then i've just moved the fountain uh, the reason i moved the fountain is because we've got this behind so uh, i've added in a a playground stroke show area and I said obviously that I wanted to do a show area for this part and so this is where the pirates and everything would come along and they'd do their bit of a show it's got multi multi levels on the uh, boardwalk and everything but actually when this isn't in use this could be used as a playground and so that's why this is not actually fenced off completely you don't have any show stuff going on and and whatever so it's just there so they can just turn up do their show go away again and the kids can carry on playing and then it's just themed really loosely around the pirate deck so there's a sail and there's the um the pot the watch out i can't remember what they're called um the lookout i just call it a lookout but then of course you've got the lighting and everything for the show itself and then some seating that's going on down this way this then has turned out pretty much as i want it uh, again this i think needs a bit more touching up um time just has prevented me so this queue now is exactly as i wanted it i mean look at it oh yes it's just you enter here and you come around this way you go along the top and you enter into a cattle pen that i'm going to show you in a moment and then onto uh, onto our top spin and then you've got the grab and go units that are sitting underneath and then of course there's the uh, there's the entrance there loosely themed around the pirate thing you know stacking lots of barrels on top of each other a couple of signs and, and call it done don't need to do too much effort with this ride because, it, like I say, it doesn't attract much of a queue. So it's fine. Uh, it's done. And then behind it, there will be a um, backstage area. But like I say, secret. And then the queue for the top spin is uh, done. So this comes into a cattle pen. I'm just going to show you this from this side. Uh, it comes into a cattle pen down this way. I've borrowed the queue covers from... The uh, the Interman and uh, Kraken's queue line. So I like I like how this has turned out. Right, this this has got two fence types. So you've got one that's a beam, and then you've got one that's uh, a rope. Just love it. And then you've got the netting, and you've got the high fence, and all sorts. And this high fence is the same fence I've used over on the station area for Kraken. So it's drawing that theme right the way through. Uh, so it's this one here, and this is actually probably the most themed flat ride <laughs> there is. And it's not very good as it is. Uh, but it, it is what it is. So it's just this piratey type thing. Poseidon's Fury. Uh, and yes. And then of course I've put the, the fountains in. Why would I not put those fountains in? Let's come down here so we can see this in action as it's going. And it's all timed on triggers. Uh, so it's all going to go. And it's timed as best as I can to the actual trigger of the ride itself. And I don't actually know when the first trigger is going to come in. So I might have set myself up for yet another fail. But it's fine. <laughs> and this is very much... There we go. There's one. <laughs> so it's very much uh, styled on Ripsaw and uh, Ramesses Revenge at Chessington. So Ripsaw at Alton, Ramesses at uh, Chessington. And that's just exactly as I wanted it. It's set down from the path. And you're looking down upon it. It looks a bit daunting from the top here. You can see down into the queue, down into the ride. Absolutely love it. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, so, 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 let's talk the future of this area then. So, like I say, uh, I've left enough cue, uh, clues in this video to know what might be coming in this area. Um, I've touched up this bit down here, so uh, I still need to do a bit more a bit more detailing, but like I say, I need to know what's coming in the rest of the area to know how this area is going to feel. And then, of course, I've not even touched this area around here because that's a future, that's a future me problem. So uh, that can be done. That can be done later on. So, guys, let's pop some glamour shots in here, uh, so so you can see the village in a bit better. 
uh, camera angles than I can do live. Uh, <laughs> a bit more considered. Thank you so much for coming along. Uh, thank you so much for hanging out with me at the uh, in the chat. I really do appreciate it. Um, I'm actually off to Thought Park now, um, or something park. I haven't decided if it's Thought Park. I'm saying that in advance. Uh, I think it's probably going to be Thorpe, but it might not be. Uh, so I'm actually lit. I'm literally about to turn my computer off and leave as soon as I finish this episode. So thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you've got to the end, please leave a like and a comment. You know it absolutely helps us find new audiences. Uh, apparently this these episodes are now ending up on Google searches because you guys are liking and commenting and that's awesome. I can't thank you enough. Thanks for hanging out with me in the chat. Uh, I think we've done enough thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. And I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. Wasn't too bad for an episode that didn't contain a coaster build, right? Dark ride. It's going to be a dark ride. Shh.